What does the future hold for the Democrats? What's next? You know, I'm so curious about this because they can either do what they did in 2016, which is double down on the cult. So they could double down on blaming Russia and blaming sexism. And we are already seeing that from some corners of the party and of the media. On the other hand, this has now happened twice. Media favorability or media trust is tied for the all-time low that it hit in 2017 after the 2016 election. Uh, the business is a real problem for places, obviously, like the Washington Post, where we've seen Jeff Bezos all but beg his employees to let him run a business and to mm. let him go back to journalistic practices uh, before the modern era. So they can do one of two things. They can totally double down or they can learn lessons. And right now, I'm not seeing a lot of signs that they're actually willing to say, we need to pursue persuade people and regain their trust, they're pointing fingers. And yeah. again, it's early, but it, the indications are not good. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Look, we're also going to see RFK Jr. have a role in, in um, Trump's team, uh, particularly to do with health. How significant is this? This is huge. Now, what he wants to do uh, is going to take an enormous amount of uh, just manpower, political will to accomplish. So even with four years, what Robert F. Kennedy Jr. wants to accomplish at, for example, the FDA, it's going to take a lot. There's, I, I just don't think there's too much you can do. It's sort of like trying to t turn the Titanic around uh, in terms of what his goals are. That said, um, you know, there are executive actions, there are regulations that can be rolled back, uh, there are regulations that can be enacted. Um, he'll be really hard for Trump to confirm to a Senate confirmed position, so like a cabinet secretary or something like that. But uh, it's possible that he can serve as sort of a czar, a shadow advisor who's uh, heavily influencing whoever is in charge of the FDA or uh, the Department of uh, like DHS, these health organizations, or HHS, I should say, Health and Human Services. So he can play a really significant role. Will it be as dramatic as people on the left are claiming? I don't think so. It's just, I mean, you just don't even have enough time uh, mm. when you have a four-year term. What about the MAGA movement? You mentioned time. Obviously, Trump's only got four more years, but he really has created this, this MAGA movement that I, I think will carry through. You know, this is the thing that Republicans have to figure out right now, is Donald Trump is making these gains in states like Maryland and New Jersey that contributed to his ability to win the popular vote. Similarly, he got people who didn't turn out in the midterm elections, low propensity voters, people who are not reliable in terms of their turnout, mm. to actually come and vote on election day. Can other Republicans do that? Can they do that with Hispanic men? Can they do that with young men? I don't know. I mean, I think it's a huge question because Trump is so singular. He's the guy who has uh, Dana White and Joe Rogan and Elon Musk. And, you know, while on paper, Elon Musk might want to support J.D. Vance or Tom Cotton or some other senator, um, having him actually go out and do as much as he did for Donald Trump and to rally the momentum in the public and in popular culture, um, I feel like that's really what ultimately swept all of these low propensity mm. voters to the polls. So whether that can be repeated without Trump on the ballot, Republicans now need to figure out how they can do that, if they yeah. can do that. Absolutely. Emily Dushinsky, so great to speak with you. Thank you so much for joining us on Power Hour. Thank you. Appreciate it.